All right. Trying to go live here. I've got a wild stallion I'm trying to wrangle. i to make sure that this angle is good. We're going to be doing um, something that I think a lot of people need to see to really help with their dogs. But I'm going to work with Henry now. And Henry is just a major fear case. It doesn't seem like that right now. But let me tell you, major fear case. Um, this guy came in with his tail tucked as far as it could go. He was not going to engage with anybody. And if you even glanced at him, he would poop and pee and just curl up into a ball like he was going to die. Um, so he's come a long way already, but there's, there's stuff I want to show you folks on how we're getting dogs like this there. Um, and so Henry's pretty young dog, so he's dealing with some, some pretty serious genetic stuff going on here. The owners definitely didn't create this, nothing that's this strong, um, but he's just terrified of the entire world. He's terrified of absolutely everything. Um, as you can see, he's never been able to go to the groomer. He's a dog that needs regular grooming. The owners have been trimming him regularly, brushing him regularly um, the best that they can, but he's so challenging at a groomer's, um, and he just pees and poops and expresses his anal glands over and over and over again that what's the point of grooming him? He's, he's dirty all over again, and it's so traumatic for him that he can't even handle it. He'll even start vomiting if he, he gets worked up enough. So um, part of his board and train, when we get towards the end, we're actually going to be taking him for regular grooming appointments um, so he can get used to a groomer and finally have a lifelong groomer. But um, got to build up his confidence. So I've taken him on a lot of field trips up and until now. We've done a lot of engagement building and stuff like that. We've done obedience and all that sort of stuff. He's working on eventually becoming off leash here soon which is a really big component to rehabbing dogs and so the biggest thing with a dog like him is engagement and i think that's something that's missing for a lot of people at home they are focusing on the mechanics <laughs> focusing on mechanics way too much so they go into a training exercise and they say my whole goal <laughs> My whole goal is I'm trying to get this dog to sit. But if you're dealing with a dog like this and you're trying to build confidence, then your goal is not to get your dog to sit. Your goal is to create a confident dog. And you can use sitting to help you get there, but sitting's not the end goal. So if all you're focused on is the perfection or the mechanics of the sit, you're still going to have an insecure, shut down dog. You're not going to have a dog that's playful and cute and funny like this that that side's not going to come out because you're trying to build a robot rather than building a confident dog so remember what your end goal is my goal is not to make him a robot for his owners they couldn't care less if he had perfect obedience they want to be able to walk their dog they want to be able to take their dog to the groomers they want their dog to be able to be comfortable in a crate and comfortable when guests come over and happy that's what they want. They don't want him to just sit and, and lie down and have perfect obedience all the time. They don't care about that. They want a happy dog, right? And so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about this engagement type stuff. And hopefully you guys can see me and hear me um, on a live video, but engagement is where it's at, which is why he's like this right now. I'll never correct any of this. It took him three solid weeks to become this. You know what I mean? Three solid weeks of, of coaxing and playing and doing all sorts of stuff to become this I don't want to get rid of this for anything even if he gets a little bit pushy about it I can settle that a little bit later on but right now if he wants to engage with me he can do whatever he wants he can jump on me he can paw at me whatever he wants to do this guy deserves it okay and so I'm going to show you some of the the engagement that I'm doing while mixing in things like obedience and building up food drive and you know building eye contact all the things that you would associate with more of the robotic type dog but I'm using it to help him feel more confident. So I'm gonna break that down for you guys a little bit here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah? Okay, let's go ahead. I'm getting too old to sit. Too old to squat like that. You need more water? Water? Henry's only 
seven or eight months old. He's still a pretty young dog. And so we're dealing with fear imprint periods. We're dealing with insecurity issues on top of genetic issues. And so the best thing that we can do for this dog, again, is not create a robot, but make this dog feel as successful as possible. So if I feel like he's struggling with something, I'm gonna break it down so tiny that he can feel like a rock star throughout every step of the process. And if I ever feel like he's really struggling with something, I might just go all the way back to the beginning and make it easier to help him feel like he's doing well on it. And if I feel like his confidence is just through the roof, those are the days that I'm actually gonna push him to do things that might be a little bit more challenging, like go on a field trip or walk next to another dog or greet a new person maybe, right? But right now, I'm gonna kind of just gauge where he's at and I'm gonna use my engagement with him, which you'll see here in a second, to increase the confidence as much as I possibly can, increase his desire to be with me, work with me, and trust in me so I can use that when we go do harder things down the road. So I've got his breakfast right here. He's hungry, which is great. Uh, we don't work dogs for treats. So if you ever wonder why you can't build food drive in a dog, you can't build attention with a dog, you can't build desire from a dog, it's because you're working for something that they want. You're not working for something that they need. When you work them for their daily food, that food drive is significantly better, significantly stronger. So we've been working Henry for his food since he got here, and now he understands the drill when it's food time, he's ready, he's ready to work. He loves it, okay? This is what your obedience should be all about. It shouldn't be a dictator, this is exactly how it's gonna go, I need obedience to control my dog. It should be a bonding experience between you and the dog. And there's great ways to make it fun, but you actually have to bring that energy with you. If you're just totally lackluster and just standing at the end of the leash and going through the motions, your dog might as well be trained by a monkey, okay? We wanna be training mindset. We don't wanna be just training the mechanics of the dog. So let me show you here. Come here, sir. I'm gonna wait for some eye contact from him. Ready? Yes, good job, bud. Very nice, very nice. Oh my God, this is so good. Now, with that, I'm waiting for the eye contact because that's where he's really connecting with me and that's where he's starting to build that bond and that trust. It's also what's gonna help settle kind of that frantic mindset that he has right now. Yes, good boy. And I don't mind the excitement coming out after that, but I'd like him to settle just a little bit, build a little bit of duration with that, and then we can play again. Ready? There you go. Ready? Good. Yes. Good job. He keeps wanting to go into that down. He's trying to anticipate what I'm asking him, but all I'm asking him to do is sit right now, so. Not correcting him or anything like that because he's genuinely trying. Not correcting or doing anything, just trying to keep him engaged and get the behaviors that I'm looking for. Maybe. Good job, sir. Let's see if we can get him up to the SIT here. There we go. Yes. I'm going to keep rewarding his SIT for a while because he wants to get rid of it and he just wants to go into the down, which is what he's been learning for a while. running in circles, but the screen is very small when doing a live video, so we're trying to stay in that screenshot for you. Okay. So he caught him up self that time, which is awesome. Good job, good job, very nice, very nice. Yes, good job, good job. So one thing you're gonna see me do that's creating more engagement and more drive in him is I'm making him chase his food. So dogs are predators, they want to hunt. If you just constantly hand the food to them, they don't have to get any better to get that. They don't have to push any harder and they don't get the thrill of chasing the food. Bring your food to life and you'll already start to have a more confident, more engaged dog. That's 
my other dog waiting to work over there. He sees this dog having all sorts of fun, chasing the food he wants to chase too. Another super high fear case, that's Remy over there. I'm going to make a video about him too here in a second. can see them in there. Super tiny little kibbles and uh, he eats and they fall out of his big old mouth and they fall into his fur. Well, because he hasn't been groomed before, the fur around his feet is super long. He looks kind of like a Clydesdale horse and the food falls out and falls on his feet and then he can't find it because it falls down into his fur and it's not until he actually starts walking later that you see all these kibbles fall out of his feet. It's so funny. Now I'm going to get ready to release him here in just a little bit. Again, you always want to teach your dog how to turn off. Even when they're ultra excited, how can you turn that off? Kind of like we teach our kids that, you know, uh, they need to be good in school or they need to be good in church and there's a time and place for going crazy. Same thing with our dogs. We need to teach them kind of an on and off switch. So we're working on the off switch right now. And when I turn him back on, you're going to see me really come to life to bring out that confidence in him and his engagement. We're gonna wait for eye contact again. Yes. Good job, Andy. Oh, it's a good boy, there it is. Good job, sir. Oh, very good. Very good. The best dog ever. To the best dog ever. Yes, So it's not the mechanics. It's not the act of telling the dog to sit or to place or whatever. It's the energy I bring and it's the energy I insist on creating and the mindset that I insist on cultivating that builds a confident dog. So we have people that say, well, I do exactly what you do in your videos. Maybe that's right. But if you're just going through the motions and you're not bringing the energy and you're not cultivating the right mindset in the dog, you won't have results. Just like if monkeys are flying a spaceship to the moon, they're probably not going to have results either. You can't be a monkey. You can't just rely on the mechanics. And your dog does not need to be an obedience rock star to be a stable dog. Okay? Those are things that we have to understand. He's never going to be an obedience rock star. Look at his floppy self, right? He's never going to be that dog that's out there competing and doing a shoots in an IPO and all this other sort of stuff. He's not designed for that. He wasn't meant for it. He's up. I gotta go put him back. So he doesn't get food for that. 
and he gets a little bit of a correction to kind of help slow him down. Um, but it's, it's all about the energy that you bring to it. If you're exhausted and you're being totally lackluster, that dog's not going to improve, especially those fearful, insecure dogs. Um, if you have a dog that's already over the top, is super excited, he's up here. Nope. Good. Little leash correction for that. You can't be tough on these dogs, not in the, anywhere in the beginning until, nope, we're going to bring him back again. We're going to bring it back as many times as necessary. Nope. Good. You have to be more consistent than the dog. Part of confidence is, is testing boundaries. Here we go again. Ah, oh, good boy. Part of confidence is testing boundaries, and then we have to start working with that as well. But, yeah, if you're not bringing the right energy, it doesn't work. And now, if you have a super excitable dog... You can have low energy. You probably should have low energy because that's what that particular dog needs. But this dog did not come in this way. This dog was completely destroyed when he came in. So this is what we want to see, this engagement, working through problems and stuff like that. Because now we're really starting to push him out in public, which he's terrified of, right? We're really start nope, starting to push him out in public. Give your dopey face. Good. And one, if I don't have the trust in the relationship, it's not going to matter. I'm not going to have a, a successful visit out in public no matter what I do. And two, if he's not absolutely in love with this, there's no way I'm going to get him to do it out there. Nope. Now I have to wait. I was about ready to get over there and release him, but now I have to wait all over again. I have to wait until he holds that the way that he's supposed to. So just because you're trying to build confidence and you're trying to be really fun, it doesn't mean you can stop being a parent. So just like when you're raising a child, you really try to be understanding. You try to see things from their perspective. You do try to be a friend, but you still have to be a parent. And this is where I have to create a little bit of discipline in him so that his family has a little bit of discipline to rely on when they go home because they can't have a dog who's out of control the opposite direction where he's just uncontrollable because he's so excitable all the time. We can't have that either. So we're trying to find that middle ground where we don't take confidence down, but we still have a dog that isn't just completely over the top, okay? So it's kind of a fine line finding that calm, confident dog right there in the middle, and you're going to kind of go all over the place in there. But he's holding it now, so I'm going to go ahead and release him. where we got this dog. How we got this dog. Don't touch the camera. 
So now you can see, this is the dog that we want. And again, I don't mind that he's a little bit rowdy. I can take that down later. I can make that a little bit more manageable so he's not knocking kids over and stuff like that. I had dog hair in my mouth. But I can't have him terrified of kids. I'd rather have him overly confident and pushy with kids, and that I can fix a little later on, rather than having him just petrified. Right? I don't want, I don't want a dog to be like that. I don't want any dog to be like that. Because if this lingers, so I'm glad his owner's got training now, but if this lingers, this fear continues, as he reaches certain milestones in his development, it might change. This might turn into straight fear aggression. And then we've got a whole yucky thing that we've got to deal with, and you might be dealing with potential bites and all sorts of stuff. He's not there yet. He was growling quite a bit when he first arrived. But he let go of that pretty quick, and that's because he's still young. We haven't, you know, been through social maturity and all that stuff yet. So it's really good that we're doing this all now because the longer that this stress stays in the body and carries over day after day after day, the worse our dogs get, the more difficult they are to manage and stuff like that. So that's not to say the older dogs are not helpable. They are, but we don't want to see this turn into aggression. We don't want to see this much fear and anxiety change on this dog. So building up that confidence is super critical. All right, that's all I'm going to film for you guys, but I just kind of wanted you to see that and get a feel for it. I see a lot of people commenting, but I don't really have time to answer questions. i got to work Mr. Remy over here for kind of the same stuff. I'm going to do another live video here and show you working with Remy. Remy's an extreme fear case. Um, you probably saw his intake video. Um, I kind of want to just give you guys an update on where he's at so you can kind of follow along that as well. So we're going to finish up here, and we'll start a new one here.